When you get to winning, for me, it's come down to maxing out. And what maxing out means is you do one more at least than you think you're capable of. So when you're done, whatever you're doing, whether it's at the gym or phone calls or meetings or in sports, one more shot, one more throw, one more swing of the golf club or the baseball bat, the separator is for the winners, they do one more. I'm addicted to one more. And so I want your mantra going forward to be one more. What does that look like if we're working out? That means when we're in the gym and we say, I'm gonna do five sets of 10, I'm crazy. Like I'm a psycho, because I wanna win. I wanna be somebody. I wanna separate. I wanna compete. And the way I do that isn't with my giftedness, because I wasn't born with a bunch of gifts. And I think gifts are crap. I think for the most part, gifted people struggle in life because things come easy to them. I like that things haven't come easy for me in my life. I like they don't have natural talents in every area. And maybe you like that about you too. Maybe you've looked at yourself all your life and thought, man, I don't have that natural beauty or that natural talent or this gift for creativity or intellect or humor. I don't have any of those things. But what I got is I will outwork you. And so at the gym, one of the things I focus on, they say it's five sets of 10. When I'm at 10, I go one more, bam, 11. If I'm running on the treadmill and it's a 45 minute run, I never finish at 45. I always go one more minute, 46. If I'm at the office and I'm supposed to make 25 phone calls that day, when I'm at the end of the day, I always do one more. If I've got meetings, I always do one more. My mantra for three decades in business has been one more. Why? Because we get out of life what we think we deserve. And I'm the kind of guy that I know when you do 45 minutes on the treadmill and I do 46, I deserve to be fitter. I know that when I'm lifting weights and I watch you do five sets of 10 and every single time I do one more. When it's a set of five, I do six. When it's a set of eight, I do nine. When it's 45 on the treadmill, I do 46. When it's supposed to be 20 phone calls, I make 21. When it's supposed to be an eight hour workday, I work nine. Whatever it is, I always do one more. And what that does is it makes me eventually think I'm doing things other people aren't willing to do, so I should get things other people aren't gonna get. You are one decision away from changing your life. And you have to accept that. You're one new meeting, one new relationship, one new contact, one new action, one new decision away from shifting your life from where it is right now to a totally different place. So what's the decision? You already know, I could go backstage now. There's something you've been hesitating on. There's a contact you need to make, isn't there? There's a job you need to quit. There's a relationship you need to engage in. Maybe there's a relationship you need to leave. I don't know what it is, but I know there's a decision that you need to make to take you to the next level, just like I know that's true for me. Because decisions shape our destiny when they're backed up by some massive ass action. Okay, but you can't take the action if you don't decide. Everyone say yes. People avoid being desperate. Think of the fact they come here tonight and they're down. They're not where they want to be financially. The relationships aren't what they want. Maybe they're in a desperate place and you might think that's a negative thing. But when you're in a desperate place, you take the best actions. Desperation is a great place to be. Those of you that are achieving, one of the reasons the achievement is slowed down is you've allowed yourself to feel less desperate. When you were broke and starting your business, or when you were brand new in your relationship, and you were desperate to get her to love you, or desperate to get him to love you, you took massive big action. How many of you are moms in the room? Raise your hand. You moms, if you woke up tomorrow morning and your baby wasn't in their bed, would you be desperate right away, yes or no? Big time desperation. You wouldn't be thinking about what you need to do, you'd be acting, wouldn't you? You'd immediately make the decision, you'd take massive action, you'd search the house, you'd go into the street. Would you worry if your makeup was on right? how you looked, what people thought about you. You wouldn't, would you? Have to have the perfect plan to go find your baby that's missing. You wouldn't need any of that because you were desperate. So when you remove desperation, all this bullshit creeps into your life where you think you have to have the perfect plan and look the perfect way and have the perfect thoughts and be all zen and perfect. What you need is to be desperate. What you need is to get after it. And I want you to get desperate to make that decision. Why? Because our obsessions become our possessions. What you obsess about most regularly, you will eventually possess in your life. The challenge for most people, sisters and brothers, is that we obsess on the things we're fearful of, what we don't have, what we're worried about. And then we end up possessing those things over and over again, rather than programming ourselves to become obsessed with what we want, what our dreams are, what we believe we deserve. When we become obsessed about those things, long term, we end up possessing those things. Can I get an amen for that? Yes? 
Yet most of us don't replace the external parts of our lives because those things happen naturally without thought. The external results of our life, in order to replace ourselves with the next best version, requires intention, requires obsession, requires desperation. Everyone with me on that, say yes. So it's not unnatural to change. Your friends that think you're crazy to have started your business or come to a seminar or spend money you don't have, they're the crazy ones. It's unnatural to be the same person you are right now next year. For all of you in here, the 35-year-old you should be gone next year forever and there should be a brand new, better 36-year-old. You 20-year-olds, there should be a better 21-year-old next year. You should constantly be replacing yourself just like your bones do, just like your lungs do, just like your cells do. It's natural to be replacing ourselves, but we're around people who aren't, so we think it's natural not to. I think you gotta find a business you're gonna start. And here's what I did, I played a game with myself and that game was this, if I hit my certain goals in a given month, I think you should go touch your dreams. Uh -huh. I think you should live in your dreams. I think uh -huh. the, the more familiar you become with your dream or whatever it is you want, the more you can touch it, feel it and be around it, yeah, yeah, the more yeah, likely yeah, you become yeah, comfortable yeah, yeah. in it, the more likely you'll acquire it. And so one of the big things that I did was I would set these goals up, whether it be an income goal or a production goal. This is when I was part time as an entrepreneur. And I'd say, if we hit X, we're gonna go away for one night. And that one night would be to a nice place. It might be like the Ritz Carlton Laguna Beach, right? Where I would go, or the La Quinta Resort in Palm Desert. And I'd uh -huh. do one night in my dream. I'd spend the three or four hundred bucks. My yeah, wife would yeah, get a nice yeah. massage. Get a taste of it. And, and I'd go play golf. And guess who you run into those golf courses? Yeah, yeah. You run yeah. into some rich dudes. Uh -huh. And I'd run into those guys on the golf course, and I would get to know them for that weekend, that time. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't you're golf. Touching, you're touching possibility. You're living Potential. in your dream. The more you can yeah, touch yeah, it. Yeah. If, you, if your dream is to feed a million people, spend one day a month actually in mm -hmm. those charities feeding people. The more you get comfortable mm -hmm. in your dream. So you don't wait until until you, you're, you're no, set to no. do it. You get little, you never do, you know this. Every yeah. little thing you've acquired, even even getting Elena, you talked about how you chased her for 13 months. You got you got around her a little bit in the meantime because the more comfortable she can get with hearing your voice messages are from you, the more likely she's gonna get in your dream. Because yeah, you belong yeah, in your yeah. dream, but you have to touch it regularly before you get it. A couple ironic things about closing and selling that you may not have ever been told before, but I'm gonna tell you. People don't have to believe what you're saying. Is that crazy? People do not have to believe what you're saying. In fact, too many of you spend too much time trying to get people to believe what you're saying. And you come across like a beggar because of it. You seem desperate. Who's ever trained you to get people to believe what you're saying doesn't get influence. There's a subtle difference that the great ones know. And you've probably never been told this before, but I know it. And persuasion is not about getting people to believe what you're saying. You ready? Persuasion is about getting people to believe you believe what you're saying. That's a subtle difference, brother. That's a subtle difference, sister. If you start to think through, I need to get people to believe I believe this, not to get them to believe it. People buy things all the time they don't believe. People buy things all the time they don't understand. That's okay. We want to educate, we want to train, but they don't have to believe everything you're saying. If they have to do that, you're going to look like you're begging all the time. They got to believe you believe it. That's a different intention. The most certain person always influences the set less certain person. When you're exchanging with a recruiter or a client, they're either going to close you or you're going to close them. And that's certainty. Certainty is influence. And you can't transfer to me something that you're not experiencing for real. You have to really believe it. You got to really be a crusader. You got to really understand it. When you really believe something, you can transfer that certainty to me. Everybody with me on that, say yes. This is a huge deal. It's a huge deal that you need to begin to understand that persuasion is they believe you believe what you're saying. I love that most people don't take anything seriously. I love that most people aren't coachable. I love that most people don't do what I teach or that anybody teaches. I love that. That's how certain people win. Half y'all haven't written a damn word down I've said. If you were in my team, I'd slap the hell out of you. I don't say that disrespectfully. I say this as a dipshit who had a Velcroed car. I don't say that talking down to you. I say, wake up! You want to win? You want to be a millionaire? You got to quit being so casual. You walk slow, you talk slow, you implement things slow, you talk a good game, like you're going to be somebody, like you're going to make hundreds of thousands of dollars. You can't even write a note down. You're going to get your ass kicked in business, dude. Business is a sport. It's competitive. You got to get focused and get in a hurry. You around a dude like me, we will smash your organization. We come to play. We're for real. What are you? Cool? I've seen all kinds of cool guys my whole career. Cool guys go broke. 
Cool guys have little flashes in the pan. They have a good two or three years. Players who implement strategies that get focused and intense, they win decades. They win multiple championships. You win for two or three years. You know how many guys I've known that have made money for two, three, four years that are ass broke now? You gotta win year after year after year to be a player in business. After year after year to be a player in business.